Today we're gonna to be talking about this and also this, but why you may wanna just buy this instead. Now this isn't a sponsored video. I paid for all of this myself exactly just how you guys would pay and I'll even show you my receipt. Now I did end up blacking out, of course, my address. If you take a look at the EG4 and also the battery, this was almost $6,000 alone. I did have to get a conduit top plate. This is for the 12,000 XP, along with a buildable conduit box and some parallel cables and also applying my own discount, which yes, if I do make some sales, they do help pay for what I do on this channel. So if you guys do make a purchase, I appreciate it, support, bam. But as you can see, looking at the total, this does come out to $6,120. That is just for the setup that you see here for the XP, the box, and also one battery with the parallel cables along with the top plate. Okay, so break down a price on this and then we'll get into a little bit of information why I think this is just a better route to go versus buying one or maybe even two of these. Okay, so just to get pricing out of the way, first off, you do need to know is that if you buy a 12,000 XP, you will need two batteries. Just because of the amount of power that it can pull, it does need more than a 280 amp hour battery like this EG4 wall mount. So total cost wise, if you were to buy just the one big inverter along with the box and also a top plate plus two batteries along with the parallel cables that you will need for this. So just this setup alone and what I purchased it for for the two batteries and everything I just said is going to cost about $10,301. Now that's gonna be before sales, tax and shipping and everything else because you might actually get a better deal depending on the sales or discounts at that time, which again, I'll have information down below you guys can check but that's how much just this system costs. Now, if we're gonna do the 6,000 XP, this unit alone can run just on one battery, so it can make it for a much cheaper setup if you were just to do the single. Now, if you were to do just this, the 6,000 XP with a conduit box, also the 280 amp hour battery, plus there are a couple things you'll need, which is also some lugs. You're gonna have to buy lugs because this one doesn't have a way to directly connect the battery cables. So you will have to buy those. That's about $20 roughly, give or take. And if you buy a crimper, like a hydraulic one, which isn't the cheapest or the most expensive, that's also gonna come out to another $60, so you'll have to buy that. But by the time you just buy one of these, it's going to cost you roughly $5,600, give or take, again, with the pricing. But now, if you wanna double up this so that we can have the same amount of power output as a 12,000 XP, well, you will need two of these, and you will need two conduit boxes if you wanna make a cleaner installation, and then, of course, two batteries. So by the time you do a double setup of the 6,000 XP with the two conduit boxes and also two batteries, you're going to be at about $11,300 or just a little bit under, again, depending on the time of the video and discounts that you might find. Okay, now both of these units are on right now, but the EPS, which puts out your power, isn't on. We're gonna go ahead and turn both of those on. Okay, so both of these just clicked on. Now, it won't take very long. Even though it's not super warm in my garage, it's about 68 to 70 degrees, roughly. Now, this doesn't have a load on it. There's nothing connected to it. It's just sitting here currently at idle. Same thing with this one. Now, one thing is that the idle consumption, that's what we're gonna compare first. Idle consumption for this is about 40 watts, give or take. It'll be 30 with PV or about 50 with a battery. So depending on how you have it hooked up, this is gonna say, let's just say 40 watts idle consumption. This one's gonna be roughly 70 watts idle consumption. If you do two of these, then your idle consumption is actually going to be just a little bit higher because now you have two pieces of equipment. So just sitting here doing nothing, two of these are going to burn more energy than just one of these alone. Now one other thing I actually don't like about this unit is the fans just kick on intermittently for no reason. Even just this thing sitting here not connected to solar and not connected to loads, the fans will just kick on for no reason whatsoever. It could be 55 in my garage, and after about 10 minutes, the fans kick on, they'll run for maybe five to eight minutes, and then they'll shut off. And I've already gone through the configuring to try to lower the fan rates as far as I can, and also to make them not come on as much. There's only so much you can do. Versus a 12,000 XP, I haven't had the fans come on at all while it just sits here at idle. So when it's doing side by side, this one's gonna use a lot more power. And if you had two of these, 
you're really going to burn more power with just the fans running and your idle consumption, so that's just wasted power. And one more thing with the fans with the 6000 XP, this is much, much louder than the 12000. Now I know these are close together, it's really just for a display setup, this is not how it's permanently mounted, it's more for just comparing, but when it comes to noise levels, if you happen to be using this in an off-grid cabin, somewhere where these could be close by, like let's say just in the next room, this thing you will hear definitely running on and off, especially when there's a load on it and solar pumping into it at the same time, which I'll show you in a minute. This thing just constantly runs all the time versus this one doesn't nearly run like this one does. It could just be excessive noise because I know when I'm working in my garage or when I am in the other room, I can hear this running a lot. So it either needs to be kind of reprogrammed a little bit differently or either the high frequency inverter in here is just not nearly as efficient and it's constantly burning energy and needs to stay cool. But even then, this puts out 12,000 watts or 50 amps and can do a 18 kilowatt surge for up to five seconds, or it can do a 15,000 watt surge for up to 10 seconds. That's a lot longer than what this can do for its surge rating, even if you had two of these together. But of course, if you double this up, your surge rating is also gonna double. Now the surge rating alone on this one is 12,000 watts or 12 kW at three and a half seconds, or 11 kilowatts at five seconds. Of course, if you have two of these, that is gonna double, but for the same amount of time. So you do get more surge capacity for running like maybe an AC unit more, but this 12,000 XP can definitely handle most of the common household AC units that are gonna be around. Now when it does come to your solar input, this is where this thing kind of exceeds a little bit. If you have an area where you can really pump a lot of solar into this thing, this can end up taking 12,000 watts of solar, so 12 kW per each input. Plus this has two inputs just like this one, but, this can handle a total of 24 kilowatts, which that's a really big array. Most people probably won't have the room for that amount of solar, unless you're kind of more out in the country a little bit and you have some land because 24 kilowatts is a lot. Versus a 6,000 XP, this one can only do 4,000 watts per input. So it does have two, but that gets you basically 8,000 watts per one unit. Now, if you have two units, that gets you to 16,000 kilowatts. So it ends up being to where this one can still handle a lot more solar input than this. So if you're wanting to really deck out with a lot of solar and pump your batteries full, well then just one of these is going to do a better job. Now one of the main reasons I didn't like just a single XP is because one of the 12,000 obviously does more power, but it's not that much more by the time you just buy one of these versus one of these. Because one of these units alone runs about $1,700 versus this is right about $2,500. So it's an $800 difference, but if you're just buying one unit, there's a lot more benefits to spending that extra $800 if you're going to do this whole setup anyway. One, because this can only do 6,000 watts, and the problem is, is you get 3,000 watts per leg. Or if you're wanting to be kind of off-grid in the suburbs, which is kind of what I am, and it doesn't take much to exceed 3,000 watts, and then all of a sudden this shuts off. Now this does handle loads really well. I was able to handle a 6,500 watt continuous load before it ended up shutting off after a couple minutes. And I'll show you what I mean by pulling more than 3,000 watts per leg. It doesn't take much and then bang, this shuts off, your lights go down and everything else. So that was really the problem is that one of these just can't really do enough for the average homeowner if you're wanting to kind of do the off grid in the city setup and more, or if you're wanting to be off grid, you will need at least two of these regardless or one of these or depending on how much power you consume, you may have to go up to an 18K on one of these. All depends on what your power needs are. Okay, I just hooked up solar to this. There is no load on it. And you hear the fans already kick on? There's nothing going on here. It's just the solar being pumped into this and the fans now are just wicked up. Okay, so as you can see there, about 3.9 kilowatts coming in right now and going into the battery, about 3.75, but no load. Okay, so just to show you, let me come back up here, put my arm there. So right now about a 760 something watt load. And as you can see here on the monitor as well, but again, all the fans are not on. If you take a look right there, this is the 12,000 XP. Nothing's going on there. The EPS is still on just to show you. And all the fans are running on the 6,000 XP with basically a pretty low load. So what I'm gonna do is turn on a couple other items in my house, just to kind of show you. We're gonna turn on these switches. This is gonna add a little bit more load. I also have a hybrid outside, and so that's gonna start charging here in a minute. So you'll see that come up a little bit higher. We'll turn on these as well, and along with also my living room. So basically, 
This is really what's keeping me kind of off grid in the city. It supplies most of the power inside of my house. Okay, so now you can see how much load we're running. It's not very much. We're running about 25 on one leg, almost a thousand watts on another leg. So that's why it's kind of a pain because most homes, you can easily overload just one leg. And so that's why you would definitely need two of these because if you're just running one, you really have to pay attention to load balancing. Hence having just a single one of these, you don't have to worry about that so much because then you don't have to worry about overloading because you get 6,000 watts. Most people are not going to pull 6,000 watts just on one leg alone if you're just doing a smaller setup. So now let's just say that your wife comes home and wants to turn on the heater and you don't know about it because they don't really seem to pay attention about how much a load is supposed to be on each circuit. Well, now you can see they're already running 1500 watts and you can see right now, so far we're okay because this ends up being on a different leg. But of course she's still cold, so now she wants to make herself a little bit of hot tea. And so now we're almost running everything at max. And this thing out here is just basically screaming as far as the fans are going. It'll just run like that all the time. It doesn't matter how much of a load, if it's 500 watts, it doesn't matter because as long as the solar is plugged in, that thing just loves to run. And then of course, if you do end up having somebody else turn on something that you didn't know about, well, that's the thing is that you have to monitor it or else the lights are gonna kick off because you're running too much load. And there it goes. Now everything is gone, the wife gets mad, and you gotta start over. Okay, so now the solar and everything is gonna be hooked up to this one and it's already up and running. And notice that the fans, they are on, like barely. So this is super quiet. I can talk over this and you probably can't even really hear it much. We'll do the same load test just to kind of show you a little bit of a difference, but this just makes your life a lot easier because it's definitely worth the upgrade. You're spending a lot of money, so another $800 really isn't gonna be that bad of an idea. That way you don't have to worry about the load balance. See, now we have each individual strings. I took them apart, I had them in parallel before, now I have them each into their own individual. So about 3,870 watts going into the battery at the moment, and 1,300 from one string, 2,700 from the other, and you can see our idle draw, 22 watts at the moment, just because the solar is hooked up. So now let me show you the same load test, and we'll also talk about a couple other things at the end, just to give you some other considerations when it comes to both of these. Okay, so now if we take a look at the load meter again, now what I have running, is basically I have this mini split up there running. That's about 1100 watts running at the moment, heating up the garage, which it's now starting to get warm in here, so I will be shutting that off pretty quick. And I do have the EV plugged in outside. It's a hybrid, so it only charges it around 1400 watts on the high setting, a little bit more than that, and then about a thousand watts on the low setting. And so that was also one of the problems is that by load sharing on one circuit, it didn't leave me a lot of room in case I ended up overloading and something else was turned on, like if I'm charging other batteries in my garage. So one of the things that was happening is that even though you try to explain it, they don't always pay attention because they wanna just use everything the way it works. So they would have this on and then they would come over here and turn on the water. Now, because I have a small hot water heater under here, it'll end up kicking on in about 10 or 15 seconds. And then all of a sudden you end up having again, too much load on one circuit. So if we pay attention to the loads on the monitor there, so now as you can see, I have again too much load on one circuit. And of course they would come over here and make their hot water and you wouldn't even know it. And so now you see the load go up even more and they would turn on the air fryer, which you'd have no idea. And of course, even with all this stuff running, you can still see that the voltage looks good and our amperage is still within range. And this stuff only stays on for a few minutes, but that was the problem. And just to show you how loud this is with the fans running with those loads, look at it. You listen? This is not very loud whatsoever. So this is another kind of a benefit that I like to this one. Okay, this thing is still running a 3000 watt load. And again, with 4000 watts of solar coming into this thing, roughly, it's still super quiet. Again, one of the things I like. Now, when it comes to some of the things like as far as user interface, as far as this display, not to mention 6000 XP, these are both are kind of archaic. They really could use some updating because this is like from 10 years ago, LCD screens. This is like stuff that you would see on like old SMAs from back in the day. This is kind of old tech, which it'd be kind of nice if they did update this and not to mention update the app 
to make it a little bit more user friendly. It's not horrible. And again, you're not going to be out here just configuring this thing every day. Once you kind of get it set up, you pretty much set it and forget it. But if you are trying to decide between a 6,000 XP and a 12,000 XP for $800 more, you will have to buy an extra battery. So that is one thing, but most of the times you're almost always going to need more storage. So you might as well just do it all in one. So I think it's definitely worth an additional $800 just to buy the 12,000 XP and kind of move along with this. The only benefit is if you buy two of these, well, you do have that redundancy if one fails, well, then you still have another one that can still supply power, but that's up to you. You can always just go with a gas generator if you happen to have some problems in your off-grid or the power does go out. This with a whole bunch more power, a lot more solar input, no lugs to buy, no crimper to buy, and so it just makes it kind of a one and done deal. So it's definitely worth the price just to go with this. So I hope this video helped you out. You can check out discounts down below and more, and I hope to see you guys in another video.